All right, so I'm like 16 and 17 now, and it's time for me to start learning driving, right? But problem is, I have no car. But in terms of cars, my favorite's gotta be my boy Elon's Tesla. Even though I love Tesla, right? Problem right now is that I'm hella broke, bro. Look at my bank account, $50. Last time I checked, $50 is not gonna pay for a Tesla with its down payment and I don't know, not even a month of its insurance. But I'm gonna be real here, I low-key don't want a Tesla. It's kind of mid. I'm low-key happy with my Toyota RAV4 second-handed. But what's the best part about a Tesla? It's self-driving algorithm. But why did I buy this Tesla? So today, your boy's gonna build a self-driving algorithm, race it against other self-driving algorithms, and race it against myself. All right, so I'm building this card through participating in a simulation competition. You know, I'm trying to get some of that money. All right, okay, let's set everything up. Bro, what is a Conda? What, what the fam? Um, and then we do that. Well, did it work? Oh, it worked. Okay, okay. All right, it's kind of slow, though. Wait, things are working. This is a good start. I think that's metered. This is not going to go. This is not going 40 miles per second. Okay. <laughs> All right, with a speed like that, not only can we not drive on the road, we can not win the competition. So let's look at how their controller works and improve upon it. All right, I'm gonna be real with you, right? I chat GPT to code and told it to explain to me line by line what it meant and then did some research myself. So disclaimer, this explanation might be wrong. Along the track, a series of waypoints are drawn. These waypoints are made up of X, Y, and Z coordinates with a heading that points in the direction the car should go in. Our car tries to follow these waypoints through the use of a steer and throttle controller. These controllers function using a PID system. To talk about PID controllers, first, let's talk about control theory. Control theory deals with the problem of how we make a mechanism move to where we want it to behave. Let's say we have an air conditioner. We want the temperature to always stay 70 degrees. The most simple way to do this is through bang bang control. Let's say if the temperature is above 70, we want to turn off the air conditioner. If the temperature is below 70, we want to keep on the air conditioner. Since we're abruptly changing from on to off in a system really quickly, there's bound to be oscillation. As a result, the temperature graph will look something like this. Controlling the temperature using bang bang control is fine, but if a car wants to turn 90 degrees at a high speed with a graph like that, it would probably crash. Here's a clip of bang bang control being used on a low speed car. This is where PID comes in. PID basically makes our graph look more like this than this. PID is what you would call an open loop system where it takes the current speed of the thing to account for how much power to give it next time. If we were to graph it out, it will look something like this. So the car is being powered by a value calculated through PID. We take the speed of the current car and it's plugged back into the controller, where we use our target minus current, which we'll call air, multiplied by PID respectively and added together to get the optimal power to send the controller next time. So P controller is simple. It's just our air multiplied by a constant. So as the loop continues, the air becomes smaller and smaller, and it will be powered smaller. However, there's sometimes a steady state error, where no matter what, the error never reaches zero using a P controller. We solve this problem using the I term. The integral term is the sum of all the years accumulated, usually multiplied by a small constant because the integral term, if it's too large, usually breaks controllers. And lastly, the D term. The D term basically measures the rate of change on the controller. And if the rate of change is too fast, it will slow the controller down, reducing any oscillations. Oh wait, this was a competition. Basically, example controller uses some fancy PID with some waypoints to follow the thing. All right, so now we have a good understanding. Let's make it better. After looking at the code, they only have the proportional controllers. So let's add the I and D terms. All right, let's run the code again. Um, okay, we're running. Oh, well, I have like 10 seconds of a clip here that I have to talk over. Um, how's your day, guys? Uh, well, the thing is, I also have noticed that I kind of talk a little bit too fast. I need to slow down, but yeah, that's an issue. Okay. All right. Oh, it crashed. Yikes. And after looking at the footage, it seems like we're just not steering aggressively enough. To fix this, we've implemented some new strats. This is the competition map. We're going to split the map into a bunch of zones. Each zone is going to be given a multiplier to the original PID values based on the zone. At a turn zone, we probably want to make our steer values more aggressive. What, when it's straight, less. You might be wondering, aren't you just manually tuning the whole robot at this point? What? Also, one of my teammates worked with me to make this cool graph thing, which is basically what you saw in the simulator. So now it's really good for debugging. So if we know oscillation big, we want to use D or just lower P and all of that, right? All right, uh, test number, um, I'm not really sure. But, okay, theoretically speaking, we should be chilling for this one. I think we can make it past like that weird 
first turn. Wait, this only happens if the speed is really low. When we turn the speed higher, um, it kind of breaks. But, okay. See, we're good, we're good. Life is good. Target speed is just 30. I forgot the units though. But after we put it up to 40, it doesn't really work well, which is an issue. But at least this works. Life is good. Okay. Yeah, let me show you. All right. Um, let's. Oh, I put it at 25. Let's even. Let's put the target speed for zone three, which is a turn, to 40. And then you can see how. I, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's try to run the whole thing once with the target speed at 35, and see what happens. All right. Back to another 30 second clip. How are we doing guys? Uh, low key, I don't know what to do after this video, which is an issue, but we should have stuff planned and I'm hoping I can upload more after this, but that's, that's a goal, that's a goal. But yeah, I've been not uploading as much. Anyways, uh, oh, it crashed. All right, what's good guys? As you can see from the video, our car still dies on some points of the map. Furthermore, it's kind of really slow and that's also not good. So these two things combined means we are not going to win the competition, right? So we need to figure out a way where we can slow down to the perfect place during turns and then speed up to the perfect place during like those straighter, uh, straighter sections, right? And we can do that through the use of brakes. But how do we know how much to brake at each turn to get the maximum velocity? Okay, so my solution to that was Ooga Booga Brake, right? We just slow down for a certain time, like 1.5 seconds. We hit the brakes at each turn and then we slow down enough to pass each turn. And then we can set whatever speed we want at the straighter lines, right? So alternate solution that someone that was smarter came up with was you can use something called a merger curvature formula and the formula for force centripetal acceleration to figure out how much we brake. Do I understand how any of this works? No. But basically, we can find the max velocity of a car at a turn by first getting its radius through obtaining three random waypoints ahead. We plug that into the merger curvature formula to get the radius of the circle. Then we plug the radius into the centripetal acceleration formula. Through that, we can get the max velocity our car can go at. So if our car goes above the max velocity, we want to hit the brakes. Yo, do you remember that like deadline thingy, like 1.5 deadline, two months deadline thing? I don't know what it is anymore. I think it was like a day before, I'm not even gonna lie. Dude, it's April 30. Wait, is it March or April? Dude, <coughs> I'm stupid. It's March. Yeah, March 30 now. And I finished the competition in December. So, dude, I've been editing this video for way too long. Please help me. Okay, with all the implementation and uh, like explanation out of the way, let's run the car again. I think this clip works. Like, this is when the car finally worked. But I'm not gonna lie, I skipped a lot of like the debugging stuff. And also, as you can see, there's like there's a lot of overshooting at turns. But other than that, the car works. And yeah, I think we submitted this run as like the final one for the competition because low key, we didn't have enough time to make it better. And yeah. So yeah, enjoy this already almost ending clip of the car running at seven times speed. Okay, so we ended the competition with a solution that runs in 385 seconds, which is three laps around the Monza map or whatever, which is pretty solid. And as a result, we got top five. Bro, why am I using freaking academic transition words? Okay, anyways, so we got top five as a result, and which is pretty much a massive W. I would like to also thank my team members, of course, because they're kind of goaded and they carried a lot of the code, like the physics one. Uh, Audrey, Gavin, Alex, and Brandon, the goats. Oh yeah, and to give myself the excuse to play a mobile game for like a whole hour, we're gonna test if this robot, which is kind of goaded, can beat me at running, I don't know, driving around a course. I oh, wait, I can just knock all racing lines, just pass all these nerds, you know? Because they're just kind of slow. I'm better, okay. I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm actually so bad. What the fuck is a drag reduction system? All right, I'll use it though. Oh wait, drag reduction system is crazy. No drag is so much easier. How do I get Monza map? Cancel. I don't care about this map. Cancel. Cancel. Dude. I'm trying to get on the Italian. I do. I don't care about the Silverstone circuit. Ah. Oh, that's Monza. Please. Wait, that's Monza, right? Wait, I, I, I found it. How do I go to League 4? The gate. Oh, fuck. Okay, what if I play a showdown? Do I have to win against all of them? What is this goofy? What? What? No, I got time limited. 
No, please. Please, I'm in a race. Wait, did I just crash? Ah! Oh. Oh, okay, wait, we're good. Just let me have the map. Let me play your map. Why you gotta be so... Oh, that overtake strategy was not it. That overtake strategy was not it. Uh... Oh, yeah, we come back from this. We come back from this. Can I come? I'm still in game. Dude, what? Okay. What? New tracks, Italy? Dude. Dude, there's no way. I'm not doing this shit. Oh no. <laughs> League 4 is that far. Okay, I give up. Okay. Based on the results from that driving experiment, I don't think I'm beating my bot. But it was a nice try. I think if you just give me a little more time, you know, like Steve Jobs didn't come out of nowhere. You know, you know how it is. But yeah, I don't think I'm beating it. But it was a good experience, dude. I was not gonna like, dude. Even getting to the Monza map was gonna take like fucking 50 years because it, it was locked behind like 50,000 experience walls or whatever. And it like grind to League Four, and I do not have the time for that. It, yeah, in all realness, realness, re uh, blah, okay. In all realness, I think that's about it for the video, dude. I, it's just 11 minutes. That's crazy. No, I, I, my last video was like eight minutes. Anyways, I hope I can upload more in the future. I'm not sure though. And peace.